Okay, this is the last section in the uh, trigonometry and modeling chapter, chapter seven in the period two book, and this is modeling with uh, trig functions. So uh, basically, these can involve um, anything that we've used so far. So they may involve the addition formulae or the double angle formulae. Um, what I call the R cos or R sine theta method where maybe you've got something like this or something like this. Okay, so they could involve any any one of those. They could involve um, cot, uh, cosec or sec. Uh, and what they tend to be is uh, something that can be modelled uh, where part of the equation is uh, a trig equation. So it might be, for example, to do with the, um, let's make up something, the level of the water or seawater or the sea as the tide goes in and out. Okay and the level of the seawater may go something like this yeah where maybe along this scale here this might be the number of hours um, this might be the height in meters above um, sort of sea level or the ground and over time what happens is the tide the level of water goes up as the tide comes in and the level of the sea water goes down as the as the tide comes out. OK, and uh, we've got something here where we've got some sort of mean sea level when it goes up and down from that. And you could probably represent that using some sort of equation. They tend to be some sort of uh, problem like this. So my suggestion would be if you're doing a question like this, have a look at the equation that's given. See if you can draw a sketch of it see you know try and get your head around what's going on before you just dive in and answer the question because if you've got an idea of what's going on it does make working for it much easier right let's start by highlighting um, the bits of this in question which are important so first of all we've got this cabin pressure uh, which is measured in psi we've got an equation that gives us the cabin pressure for a particular time and that time is measured in hours and because we've got sine in here any angles it says here are measured in radians so first thing you want to do is to check is your calculator in radians mode so it needs to be in radians mode for this it's easy to miss that out and with these trigonometry questions it could be degrees or radians so be prepared to change modes in these questions right pi a. let's get cracking on this part a we want to find the maximum pressure and the minimum pressure now when are we going to get in the maximum pressure let's have a look at the equation it's 11.5 minus something okay uh Let's have a look at the seventh, second bit of the equation, and I'll do that up in the corner. The second bit of the equation is this. Okay, you're going to be minusing that. Now, um, if I look at this part here, sine of something, well, sine of anything can only go up to 1 and down to negative 1. That's all the sine can do, okay? And then that gets multiplied by 0.5. So the whole of this can either only go up to 0.5 or down to negative 0.5. So those are the values I'm either going to be adding or subtracting to 11.5 to find the maximum and minimum pressure. So the maximum pressure is going to be when I subtract actually the negative 0 0.5 to get 12 psi so that's basically the 
uh, subtracting the smallest value, the, subtracting the negative, and the minimum pressure is going to be when I subtract actually the maximum value of sine t minus 2, which is going to be 1 times by 0 0.5. So I need to subtract that value, so 11 psi. Okay, so we've got our answer for part A, 12 and 11 PSA part, uh, psi. Part B, find the time after reaching cruising altitude that the cabin first reaches its maximum pressure. So planes take off, they reach a cruising altitude, 35,000 feet, something like that. And um, the pilots stick it on autopilot. Um, the cabin pressure is monitored automatically and there's probably all sorts of sensors that, you know, if it goes too low, it will increase it. If it goes too high, it will decrease it. And it probably goes up and down in a, a sign shaped graph. So I could imagine that, you know, the cabin pressure is probably going like that, you know, quite slowly. And we've got this 11 here and, and it's probably doing something like that. And uh, yeah, once it's um, at cruising altitude, uh, the pilots probably stick on the autopilot and uh, sit there watching some... Uh, Netflix videos or TikTok videos on their phones. Right, part B. Right, when is it going to reach its first maximum pressure? Well, we're going to get the first maximum pressure. So first max pressure um, at or when the sine of T minus 2 is equal to negative one yeah so we want to find the values of two uh, t uh, that are going to give us negative one okay so we want to work out what t is so it's probably helpful to think of a normal graph of sine yeah, it's like we're solving an e equation now right so um i could actually uh, yeah, solve that equation. Let's do this uh, sine inverse of negative 1. And I'll get uh, negative pi over 2. So if I do the sine inverse of negative 1, that will give me t minus 2 equals negative 1.5707. Whoops, 07 so on so if i just add 2 to that i will get t equals 0.4292 okay i need to change that into a time so i just times that by 60 and i'll get something like 25.75 minutes so 25.75 minutes normally in questions like this you you give the answer to the nearest minute so we'll go 26 minutes here okay so let me just highlight the answers so this is part b these are the answers for part a right let's go to part c part c is fairly straightforward so um we want to find a pressure Basically, when the time or the sign here, sign um, at five hours, sign of five minus uh, two. This is easy to do because you just type it in your calculator. In an exam, this would probably be worth um, one mark, um, sign of five minus two. And I get um, 11.42944. I always like writing out the full on answer before uh, writing down like the rounded answer. Um, it doesn't give any sort of value. So let's go for three significant figures. P equals 
0.4 psi. Okay, so I'll just highlight that. And we're on to the last bit of the question. Part D, find all the time during the first eight hours when the, uh, of cruising that the cabin pressure would be exactly 11.3. So let's start by writing down what that equation looks like. 11.3 equals 11.5 minus 0.5 sine t minus 2. Okay, so what we can do with that is take away um, 11.5 away from both sides. And then once we've taken 11.5 away from both sides, we can, I think that gives you negative 0.2. Then divide both sides by negative 0.5. That will give you uh, two fifths or 0.4 equals sine t minus 2. Right, this is just solving a trick equation. So, first thing, sine inverse of 0.4 to find the first solution. That will give me what t minus 2 is. So um, sine inverse 0.4 gives me uh, 0.412 if I round to, to that. I know it goes on further than that. Now we use our cast diagram to see uh, what the other solutions are. Okay, so we've got our principal solution. Let's use the cast diagram to find the others. So 0.412 um, will probably be about there. Let's put our cross in. So 0.412 CAST. So our angle landed in this part of the cast diagram, we're dealing with sine. Uh, and that part of the cast diagram, everything is positive. So we're looking, we're trying to solve an equation for sine. So where is sine positive over here? Okay, so that will give us a, another solution. 0 0.412 here. Now we don't want to lose any solutions so we're going to keep going around forwards and backwards uh, because we're going to have to add two to our answers we don't want to to lose anything right so we have the first solution uh, and we're going to add two to all of these in a moment so we've got t minus two so we've got 0.412 then we've got pi minus 0.412. That's the other one on the diagram. If I go around a second time, I'll have 2 pi plus 0.412. So it should be 412 uh, there. And uh, let's see, can we keep going? We've got 2 pi. Uh, after that, we're going to have 3 pi minus 0 0.412. And um, are there any negative ones we can want to consider? So if I go backwards to negative 2 pi, it would be negative 2 pi plus 0.412 so I've got all of these to consider um, any once I've added two on I'm going to discard any where it's less than zero or more than eight so 0.412 is fine I can keep that that's all right it's probably a little tick by that one if I do pi pi minus 0.412 that's fine um, do that again minus 0.412 that's 
7295, so 2.73, we'll call that, that's fine. Um, so let's get to the same color again where we were. So that's 2.7. Three zero, so that was this one. That's okay. The next one is um, two pi, two pi, and add zero point four one two. Okay, that um, looks fine as well. Actually, let me just go back a step. I've got to add two on, haven't I, to these? So let's rub those out and we'll start again. All right, let's try again. Let's add two to them. So 0 0.412 plus two. So 2.412 hours. So that's okay. Right. Back a step to where what we should have been doing pi minus 0 0.412. Okay, add two to that. Right, 4.729, let's call that 4.730 hours. 4.730 hours. Okay, if we work out the next one, if I do 2 pi plus 0.412, and I add 2 to that, too big, 8.695 hours. So let's just cross that which also means that's going to be too big. And last one I need to look at is that negative 2 pi. Uh, when I work backwards, so negative 2 pi, uh, add 0 0.412. Okay, that, um, and then I add 2 to that, that's negative, so that's no good. Let's just stick the one in there right and then as soon as i put the one in i'm going to cross it out right so that just leaves these two values here of t which i now need to change to hours so first value two hours and then 0 0.412 times 60 24.72 minutes 25 minutes And then the other one's going to be four hours. And then I've got 0 0.730 times by 60. 43.8. So we'll call that 44 minutes. I think I've said it before. In these types of questions where you're dealing with hours and minutes, I'd probably round it to the nearest minute unless it says that you're dealing with seconds. And there we go. So that is the answer for the last bit. Okay, so exercise 7G, pages 190 to 1991, they're all the same type of thing. You're basically going to be solving a trig equation or substituting into a trig equation. Nothing changes about the way that you solve it. So, you know, use the cos inverse, tan inverse or sine inverse uh, to find a principal solution, cast diagram to find your other solutions it's exactly the same as what you've done before it's just a worded question but it helps to read through the question first so that it you know you've got some idea of what's going on so that if you've got an idea in your head of what's happening it does make it easier to solve it